Okay, so um, uh, we started AES. Uh, we have done subbyte, not using the tables, actually using the calculation, mathematical calculation of this. Uh, we have done mixed column, which also requires some type of mathematical calculations. And I think in the middle we have something called shift row, which we don't need to worry about it because uh, it's not mathematically done. It's, you normally just shift one byte. Uh, one of the things that fascinates me is actually the key expansion algorithm for AES, uh, uh, which is quite amazing. And uh, don't worry about this. Uh, diagram. I'll explain this diagram using these two conditions, which are really, really amazing. I mean, uh, I I love the process. How does this beautifully? How does each round's is, uh, key is calculated? So what we're gonna do is this. Uh, so here's the introduction of this. So as we know, in AES 128, uh, we have 10 rounds, and for individual rounds after mixed column, each key is being added and then the second round and third round all and 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 goes on so we're going to look at the key expansion algorithm for es128 which is very very amazing i i really love it okay so let's say the shared key between you guys and sender and a receiver is this which is a master key which is also 128 bit so i just simply wrote it down here so this is an hexadecimal number so we have one two three four five six we have 16 bytes which means 128 bits and I have written them down in terms of an hexadecimal value, like 2, 4, 7, 5, 8, 2, B, 3, 3, 4, so 7, 5, 5, 6, 8, 8, 3, 1, 8, 2, 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 3, A, A, 5, 4, 8, 7, okay? Uh, this diagram beautifully uh, uh, breaks this down. So what we're going to do, what we're going to do, we're going to take first four bytes, and I'm just going to simply call them W-O, all right? Then I'm going to take another four bytes, and I'm just going to simply call them W-1 word uh, w is for word all right so word word in aes is actually not uh, uh, two bytes it's actually four bytes okay so we have four bytes uh, and then we have four bytes here k8 k9 and k10 k11 so we have four bytes and then we have four bytes so this is the master key that sender and receiver has uh, agreed upon and based on this master key we're gonna degenerate individual round key and specifically in AES 128, we're going to generate about 100, uh, 10, 10 individual round key using this, using key expansion algorithm. Okay, so uh, don't worry about this hectic picture. Let's, let's go through this picture and let's, and let's define these two conditions, which will help us. Uh, you don't even need to know this. Uh, uh, you don't even need to know this uh, picture, actually. Just know these two conditions and you're good to go. Okay. So just, just for the sake of it, let's just talk about this figure. Okay, we have four bytes. Let's just call them W0, 0, 1, 2. This is known as pre-round transformation. Just converting them into bits, uh, into four bytes. It's just pre-round transformation. After this, as you can see, W0, it goes on and is being XORed with some value called T4. All right? T4 is just think of it like an initialization vector or some value that needs to be calculated if it fulfill one of these two conditions. All right, you just th think of it, these T4 values all the way up to T10, because there are 10 rounds. That's why you have T4, 8, 16. Uh, then we will have, sorry, T4, 8. It's going in, in, in an increment of 4. So 4, 18, uh, 4 times 3 is 12, then 16, and then we have uh, 20, 24 and so forth all the way up to t40 okay so think of these t values as being your initialization vector a value that is required for you to be to xor this value and this value these two values are being xor this is forming another uh, uh, word which we are calling it w4 which is that the answer of this is being xor with w1 which is forming another word w5 and W2 is being XOR with W5, which is forming another word, which is W6. W3 is being XOR with W6, uh, and is forming another word, which is W7. So not this value, not the T's value. These value will be the round key. So this, this, all of this, so you have four bytes here, four bytes here, four bytes here, four bytes here. The output of these four bytes, of, of these bytes, 
are going to be your round one key and so on round two key round three key round four key round five key and so on all right so we don't need to worry about this diagram so let's look at two beautiful conditions all right so uh, this is we need to ignore this this is just pre-round transformation here we come uh, we have i so we're going to start off from here so i has a value that can go from 4 to 40 okay so in place of i this is going to be either 4 or it could be an increment of 4 8 uh, 12 16 and things like that all right so let, let's do this uh, so it will be the value so let's 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 look at first condition let's start off with this so what is what if i mod 4 is not is equals to 0 then wi is e is equals to wi minus 1 xor with wi minus 4 all right this is the first condition let me explain this condition what that condition is saying let's say we have 4 what is 4 mod 4 4 mod 4 is 0 so this condition is not being fulfilled we need to go to a different condition which is this okay if i mod 4 is equals to 0 then wi is equals to some placeholder t value xor with wi minus 4 where t is equals to we need to take this whatever that value is wi minus 1 rotate that rotate means shift a byte left shift a byte take a sub word which means go to your sub byte table and and find out after the transformation take a sub byte of that using your s boxes we have learned how to calculate as um, a sub byte using mathematically but here we're going to use a table so once you do that take an xor with something called archon which is also part of the standard all right Archon is also part of the standard, which is right here. We're going to take that. And I minus 4, we're going to choose based on whatever the I value is going to be. Divide by 4, we're going to choose one of these values which are given in the standard. And we're going to take an XOR value. That value would become your T. And you're going to insert that T. And you're going to take an XOR uh, with this value. All right? So let me explain this. So let's do an example. Let's start doing an example. Let me explain this. Let's say your i is 4, which is 4 mod 4. All right. What is 4 mod 4? Is equals to 0. All right. So in place of i, this would become what? Let me take a pencil. So in this way, I can easily explain this. And if I can make any adjustment if I want. So for example, we're going to take i is equals to 4. All right. So let's take i is equals to 4. So 4 mod 4 is 0. So we're going to fulfill this condition. So this condition is going to be w4. All right. Check this out, guys. w4 is equals to some place value t. We're going to talk about this later. And then xor with w. What is i? i is 4 minus 4. That would give me what? That would give me w4 to be t x or with w 4 minus 4 which is 0 now check this out guys isn't that amazing now look at the diagram w4 is being x or with what x or with some t value which we're going to calculate later with w0 isn't that amazing this is the same depiction of this diagram using these equations i hope you're getting it okay so this W4 is being XORed with what? Look at the diagram. Diagram is being XORed with some T value and some WZ value. We already gotten this. So we don't need to remember these diagram. All we need to do is just remember how does these equation works. Let's do another condition. Let's do, so this is condition number two. Let's do condition number one. Let's say my I, uh, sorry, it, it can take any value from 4 to 20, 440, up to 4 to 40. Uh, but t values are going to only occur at the multiples of 4 okay so uh, l let me just make this correction okay so now let's take i i let's take i is equals to 5 all right so let's take i is equal what is 5 mod 4 what is 5 mod 4 it's definitely not 0 it's it's mean it's something other than 0 then then we're going to take this value 
we're going to take w5 is going to be w5. We're going to use this condition, guys. w5 minus 1 xor with w5 minus 4. So this would become what? This would become w5 would become w5 minus 1 is 4 xor with w5 minus 1 is 1. Now check this out. Let's look at your w5, guys. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so w5, this value is being xor with what? w4 and w1. So we don't need to remember this table. All we need to remember is these two conditions and what values of i that we need. So i is equals to be i can be from 4 all the way up to 40 but we're only going t will only come into place where i have multiple of fours because i need some initialization vector value to actually come up with this t value so sort of t is like an initialization vector that's where this t will come in and then we will uh, and and this is how you would actually generate the key so uh uh, I think this video is getting too long, so let, let me cut it short and let's make part two of this. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel.